Confused about the cosmos? Can't tell a planet from a star? Then give us just five minutes and we'll show you what they are. Jack Horkheimer, Stargazer, tells you all about the night sky and the biggest show of all, the universe. And now, this week's episode. Follow the moon past planets and stars in the morning sky. Hey there, Stargazers. I'm Dean Regas from the Cincinnati Observatory, and I'll be your guest host this month on Stargazer. Next week, the waning crescent moon will lead you down a trail past several bright stars and three planets just before dawn. Let me show you. Okay, we've got our skies set up for an hour before sunrise on Tuesday, December 28th, facing southeast. Almost halfway up the sky, you'll have no trouble spotting a last quarter moon. About 13 degrees down to its left, you'll see the bright blue star Spica in the constellation Virgo the Virgin. About 10 degrees to the moon's left, you'll find the ringed planet Saturn, which is now showing us more of its ring system after presenting them nearly edge on to us last fall. Saturn's rings will continue to open for the next several years. If you are lucky enough to get a new telescope for Christmas, here's a good chance to put it to use. Make sketches, or if you can, take pictures every month of what Saturn looks like in your telescope. Keep them all together and watch Saturn change. You'll quickly notice that Saturn will not stay in the same place in the morning sky. The next morning, Wednesday, December 29th, same time, same direction, the moon will have moved to about four degrees below Spica. The next morning, Thursday, December 30th, an even skinnier moon will be just to the right of a pair of stars with funny sounding names, Zubinel Janubi and Zubinesh Shamali. In a line to the left of the moon, you'll see two stars in Libra that have claws. But isn't Libra a set of scales? What's up with this claw bit? Well, way, way, way back, the Greeks used these two stars to mark the ends of the claws of Scorpius before there even was a Libra. The Romans inserted a set of scales here and rearranged the stars of Scorpius to make room. There's nothing sacred or permanent about constellation patterns. Every culture in history has had their own sets of star figures and stories about them. Why not make up some of your own? Hey, there's Dean's dinosaur. The next morning, Friday, December 31st, New Year's Eve, a very skinny moon will be about seven degrees down to the right of that brilliant light in the morning sky, Venus. Venus is still incredibly bright in the morning sky, but will be getting lower each day. The next morning, New Year's Day, if you're still up after ringing in 2011, a super skinny 27 day old moon will be just three and a half degrees above the giant red heart star of Scorpius and Teres. The contrast between these two is nothing short of amazing. The moon is a small 2,000 mile wide rocky body reflecting the light of our sun. It is by far the brightest thing you'll see in the sky, but only because it's so close, only 236,000 miles away. Its light takes one and one quarter seconds to get here, while the light from Antares takes about 550 years to reach us. Antares is a red supergiant star. Some educated estimates put its width at over 700 times the diameter of our sun. Although it's cooler than our sun, Antares is at least 10,000 times brighter, and perhaps much more. Another reason to take note of Antares is that it's a very massive and potentially unstable star. It is expected that Antares will explode as a supernova some day or night. It may have already done so, since the light of the supernova would take 550 years to reach us. And we just don't know about it yet, but probably not. The last day of our tour, January 2nd, has the moon even skinnier, just down and to the right of one of the most difficult planets to find, Mercury. Mercury will be almost at its highest, which is never very high, even at best. You'll have about a week to find pinkish Mercury before it will race back into the glare of the rising sun. Let's go over this one more time. December 28th, December 29th, December 30th, December 31st, January 1st, and finally, on January 2nd, follow the bouncing moon to Mercury and keep looking up.